Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno, where today we get to speak to one of the unsung heroes of filmmaking, without whom there'd be no film for a director to direct, there would be no part for an actor to play, and quite simply, there would be no story for an audience to sit and enjoy. So we grabbed an opportunity to speak to Hollywood screenwriter and filmmaker himself, Stuart Hazeldean, in our three-part special about the art of screenwriting. We also grab an opportunity to speak to him a little bit more about his new venture with director Alex Proyas, about their take on the Milton poem Paradise Lost, starring Bradley Cooper. Stuart, thank you very much for, for joining us today. Right. And I'm, I'm very intrigued to find out how, what your background is and how you got into filmmaking. Um, well, I didn't have any um, sort of family connections with the film industry or the entertainment industry at all. Um, I was just a sort of compulsively creative kid who started off uh, drawing because I don't think there are any five-year-olds out there who are Ernest Hemingway's. Um, so I was into comic strip art and all that kind of stuff. And uh, then I got the opportunity to write creatively in school, you know, English language, you get to write long stories. And I really got into that and started writing stories in chapters um, a lot earlier than I probably should have. Um, uh, went to university and found a filmmaking society. And uh, that kind of blew my mind that there could even be such a thing as a filmmaking society. Um, so I joined and someone gave me a movie camera and some film and I went around the campus and shot a bunch of little shots and edited it together as a sort of um, day in the life of university and it was awful. But I liked it and I had fun. Um, so uh, I just got the bug and teamed up with some other filmmakers and spent my whole college basically making short films and longer and longer films every year until I just decided this is what I want to do. Um, and when I graduated from university, I decided to write a proper feature film script and bought a couple of books to show you how you should write scripts and format them. Uh, I think up until that point I was doing them in my own special language. Um, and uh, very handily, I, the, the first script that I wrote sold. So um, that I wasn't quite expecting my first script to sell, but it did. And I, I sort of wrote a, uh, it was back in the 90s when all the sort of Air Force Ones and Die Hard Fives were coming out. And um, uh, I wrote sort of Die Hard on the London Underground, basically just a sort of one of those enclosed space thrillers. And, and I found a producer who, uh, who wanted to option it. So I, I got into the film industry fairly young at sort of 24. I, I was, I guess, a professional writer. And, and obviously you're, you're British, you're based in Britain, but you also write for Hollywood. And how, yeah. does, how did that happen? Uh, I was working here for a couple of years uh, and the guys who had bought my underground script uh, were making films that very obviously had a Hollywood sheen to them and they wanted to make Hollywood movies. And so I targeted them and, and I kind of rode out a little bit on their coattails and ended up going out there for, for some meetings and to do a rewrite with one of them. Um, met some agents and got signed up and that's just kind of how it went really. But it was, I definitely targeted that. I wanted that to happen. Um, I didn't personally want to leave the UK in order to do it, which de definitely made it a lot tougher um, because generally if you want to go out there you have to go out there lock stock and barrel um, and I thought about it but uh, I, I just managed to, to to make it work by going out uh, a couple of times a year really and for a month each time and just getting in everyone's face and, and photocopying all my scripts at Kinko's and you know meeting every development executive who was, who was English or connected to an English company or something like that um, and, and I started getting jobs and that was sort of late 90s um, and I've been able to, to, to work full time ever since. And you, you've also directed, written and directed your own films, obviously, you, and you've, you've written for other people as well. How does that process differ for you? Uh, from screenwriting? From, from, well, the screenwriting stroke directing and, and being in charge of your own material, really. Well, control is always nice. Um, uh, when you're a screenwriter, um, there are some great things about being a screenwriter. You set your own hours, you, you, know, you can wander around in a dressing gown and nobody cares. Um, and also in the filmmaking process, you're one of the ones who gets paid first up front. So once you take a job, you're going to get paid. Whereas if you're a producer or a director, you often have to put in many months of free work before you see any kind of uh, money. So, uh, so writers actually do quite well from that. But the downside is that you can be one of five writers and uh, there, are, there are days where you feel deeply included and at the table with the big boys and then the next day you can suddenly feel like a secretary. Depending upon who is paying you and how, uh, you know, whether you respect their notes or not, if they're great notes it's a joy and if they're not great notes then it's sort of, you know, um, purgatory. Um, but, but when you're directing, it's sort of the opposite. It's extremely physically taxing and, uh, and you don't get much sleep and you're running around like crazy. 
but uh, you are the boss and everything that you say gets done. Um, and, and so uh, just the sort of constant execution of directing for me when I did it was I'd been writing for many years and there was that sort of refreshing feeling of like, wow, this is all going to happen. Whereas you can be a writer and you can be a successful writer and not have a movie made for years and years and years. You can just keep getting hired and keep getting paid, but not actually see your scripts end up on the screen. And, and no amount of money in a bank account will... Um, make up for the fact that we all get into the film industry to to see films get made. If we wanted to make money, we'd go to the work in the city or on Wall Street. So um, uh, it was really nice to to make a film like Exam and just you know actually physically make something and have control. Because it's, it's, the thing is, as well, it's, it's a labour of love, isn't it? What you're doing is is creative, and, and it takes takes such a long time to generate a script that you're putting your heart and your soul into it, and. For it to, to not end up on the big screen, which is what it was intended for, must be sort of really, really hard. It can be, and even when it does end up on the screen, um, there's a curious dislocation uh, in terms of the time scales that you work on. Um, when you're directing, you know that the movie you're making is, is on, working on a particular timetable and, and you're, you're, it's being made in front of your eyes, you're, then you're editing it and then it comes out and it's, it's very now. Uh, and the same experience is the case for actors. When you're a writer, you can write a script and it cannot get made for five years. So you can be deeply passionate about it five years ago and then you move on and do ten other projects and then someone calls you up and says, so-and-so is starring in your film and it's getting made and your mind almost kind of goes back into the mists of time to try and re-access the passion you felt at the time. <laughs> maybe, maybe they want you to come back on it and do more work on it, in which case you really need to do that. But even if not, even if someone else is writing it or they, they don't change the script, there's still that feeling of like, oh goodness, I might get interviewed about this. <laughs> so you have to remember. Uh, I mean, Paradise Lost, my first draft of Paradise Lost, I think I wrote in 2006. It's now 2011. It's shooting in 2012 and coming out in 2013. So that's what, seven years after my first draft? Um, last draft was for me was 2009. But um, uh, yeah, so there is that feeling of like you, that you've lived with something on and off for a very long time. And <clears throat> say, for instance, I'm I want to be a script writer, for instance. So how how do I begin? Does it does it first start off with an idea? Where does it start? Um, well, I think that the ideas can come from anywhere. Um, you need to have a brain that sees stories in things, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a screenwriting story. It could be a, a novel or a play or something. But you need to sort of see a narrative in uh, events that have happened to to you or friends or something you've read in a newspaper or just a completely fictional character that comes into your head. And then I think the first thing that you need to do once you've got a sense of what that story is, is to figure out what is the right medium to tell it in. Um, I do occasionally get story ideas. I think, wow, that's probably a novel or that's a play. But most of the time, they seem like movies because my brain tends to think that way. I, I think in imagery as well as words, and obviously you can't convey images uh, in novels in quite the same way, uh, and you can semi-do it in a play, but still cinema is the medium for images. So I, and they will often say that screenwriting is writing in pictures. So uh, my brain tends to go towards movies. So uh, yeah, you just have, and then you have to sort of figure out how to turn, to generate enough ideas to string a structure together um, and spend a lot of structural time. All the hard work gets done in the first phase, I think, the serious planning of a script, figuring out all the, um, all the machinations of the, the plot and the characters and making sure that everyone's arcs are working right. And um, it's very hard to teach that and it's very hard to articulate exactly how it works. But I think if you drench yourself in enough movies, and, you, and I've watched thousands and thousands as, you know, as a teenager and in my 20s just out of sheer love, you just start absorbing the, the unconscious structures of, of scripts without necessarily knowing what they are, but you just know when something's right and when something's wrong, um, and when something's getting better or getting worse, and you just keep moving those pieces around on the board until the links feel solid, and it's just really looking for a progression where each moment seems to lead to the next. It's not necessarily about ending up in the right place, but you need to have a pleasing journey because every minute of a movie is an opportunity for the people in the audience to get engaged with the movie or to get pulled out of the movie. And any time it feels like the journey you're taking them on is going off in a weird direction and they get jarred out of the film. 
um, because film is about suspension of disbelief and, and any number of things can suspend the disbelief. It could be a bad performance, it could be a bad special effect, but most often than not, it's just storytelling that doesn't make sense. So that's the thing that you really have to try and, uh, and nail down is, is the most pleasing progression through a story. Do you, do you, um, when, you when you're sort of planning um, and trying to structure your story, do you, ha do you start with, with the beginning and you know where you want to get to in the end before you start to fill in the bits in the middle because you need to know what direction you're going into, bearing in mind, um, I imagine you have a certain number of pages that you need to write for a screenplay. Yeah, I never start writing an actual script until I know the whole story. So I try to do the minimum amount of working stuff out when I'm actually doing the draft itself. So I sort of break it down. Uh, I, I will get an initial idea. There's obviously a, a point at the beginning of your idea, uh, at the beginning of your story where you don't know how it's going to end unless the idea, the endless, the ending is the thing that pops into your head. I mean, you know, maybe M. Night Shyamalan had the idea that a guy finds out he's dead and, uh, and all the rest of the story flowed backwards. I don't know. So, so that, that can happen. Sometimes you, it's an idea of, about a character that sets you off, or most often it's a concept, which is a sort of an act one thing. What would happen if this crazy thing happened? Um, and that will always happen in the first 20 minutes of the movie, generally. So I get that idea, and then uh, you go through a process of just sort of daydreaming about it for a long time and generating all kinds of notes at the end, the middle, the beginning. Um, and then there comes a point where you feel like you've probably got enough raw material, and then you start trying to put that stuff in some kind of order. Um, and, and I'll sort of go through and just try and create a, a sort of skeletal structure of the story of roughly what the bones of the story are, the beats they would often call them. Once you've got that, then I'll start going into the scenes and just doing sort of free flow of thought, just throwing all kinds of ideas of anything that could happen in that particular scene, any kind of dialogue that's possible, any kind of plot, um, without too much thought to what I prefer, but it's just sort of generating as much possibility as possible. And once I've got all all that sort of muscle in there then I go back in and that's when I'll do the actual draft of the script and I'll go through and make all the choices about which dialogue and which plot beats in this in this scene do I think are most important and then stick the rest in your scrap at the end and, and go through and hopefully hopefully that that works. And uh, do you write a treatment? Often yeah um, normally because I'm lazy and I want to sell the treatment without having written the script um, but yeah I think sometimes a, a, a producer demands it sometimes I demand it um, but generally a treatment does get written it's more a case of whether it's a, a, uh, a polished treatment for others to read or a less polished treatment that you do for your own sense of what the story is and, and at the minimum I'll always do that.